recommended, but well, asked by one of my subscribers. I asked for a tutorial on the depth of field in Cinema 4D, and I'm gonna go and show you a couple of ways you can do it. Um, one is doing it within Cinema 4D, and another is uh, slightly less destructive, which means um, you're not actually doing the depth of field when you render it out, you're actually doing it in post-production in After Effects. So what I'm going to do is just create kind of like a basic scene. Um, for this I'll use just a platonic ooh, um, in a cloner and I'll switch it to grid. I'm uh, just going to change these to something like this and I'll also throw in a random vector and for fun just a bit of rotation just so these are slightly more spread out and a bit more random and we'll kind of just play with this until we get something that we're happy with. So this here will do. This will give us um, kind of a nice depth of field and just for the sake of it we'll add in a quick light. Um, nothing really fancy, just a area light with some shadow. So what we have is, if this actually wants to render out, very basic scene which for some reason my computer always likes to kind of make it disappear but this is what we're going to work with for now and just to speed things up I'll change it to normal shadows so there we go here's our scene and we're going to throw in some depth so kind of when you get the kind of angle which you like so somewhere like here just insert a camera and that'll be where you want so that that'll be somewhere like here and the point of depth of field is um, it makes things look slightly more realistic like if you're playing around with a camera um, a lot of photographers use depth of field uh, to maybe focus on one subject where it's kind of blurring the background so it's interesting in the background but not overpowering and the whole point of it is you have a focal length as well as an aperture and so that kind of comes in with a physical renderer, uh, renderer which I'll get into but in the standard renderer what we have is the focus distance and so if you see when we move the focus distance up and down we have this box moving back and forth and this is actually the line which our camera focuses on so basically what we want to do is kind of line it up with an object that we want so I actually want these here so I'm just going to move it back until it's kind of over uh, here and I'm just going to make it um, 1280 by 720 and so what we have here is our objects being focused on um, if I go out my camera here and if we render out nothing happens once again because we haven't done anything in the details option of our camera we have front blur and back blur so we can turn on back blur and if we render still nothing happens because you actually have to add depth of field in in the renderer so you can go to effect depth of field or simply just right click anywhere here click depth of field and as soon as we do that when we render we're gonna have a bit of blur in the background so we could change this up to get something more uh, kind of makes it stand out a bit more and I'll kind of show you this in the picture view just so um, you actually can see what it looks like so here we have depth of field in the background maybe this is a bit too strong um, and what you can do is if you really want to blow this out as well you can see we have um, this back line here which is the end point for our blur so basically you get a kind of gradient between here and here um, of how much it blurs and so if I was to put this right up next to it what we actually get is something quite harsh uh, straight away it might not be too obvious here 
Um, in fact, there's pretty much no difference at all, but it does help uh, to get a slightly more subtle blur just by bringing it back a bit. And basically, the higher you have your value here, the higher, well, the, val the strength here is basically how blurred it gets. So this can give a really nice result. Another method is to actually use the physical renderer. Uh, but this takes a bit longer. So if we go into the physical attributes of our camera, in fact, first of all, if it's set up perfectly the same and we render out, you can see we have absolutely no depth of field at all. That's because there's not actually a depth option in um, the physical renderer. Um, well, a depth effect. And so this depth map rear blur doesn't actually do anything. So what we need to do is go to the physical tab and when I talked about the um, aperture this is kind of what it is, the f-stop on a camera. Um, if you've ever played with one of them um, this will kind of look a bit familiar. Uh, but your f-stop or aperture is basically um, how much blur basically you're giving. So f8 is quite a wide aperture and so no am i getting this i haven't done photography in a while um f8 um you don't get too much blur because basically the iris of the camera isn't open too much i think that's right um so it doesn't let too much light in um and so you don't get much kind of well it's almost like a pinhole camera uh, in that case. Um, and so <laughs> I'm trying to work out um, the actual theory of it now. Um, basically, it doesn't give you too much depth uh, because it kind of just lets an equal amount of light in. Whereas if you have um, something like f1.8, you've got a very wide aperture, so it lets a lot of light in and really blurs out the background, especially the closer the object is. So with an f-stop of 1.8, we can go into our physical tab here and turn on depth of field. And if we render this out now, you get a very slight look at the depth here. but not too much which I'm quite surprised at. This is meant to give quite realistic depth um, but I'm, I don't really use it too much and so you can actually go right down to like F1 and if we try this so we're getting slightly more blur here in the background and you can see we're getting something so that was before if we look in the background here and this is with the aperture um, wider so you could you could go lower I'm pretty sure you can go to like 0 0.1 and render that out and there, <laughs> there you go um, there's some more depth of field and even though it's pretty blurry uh, well kind of pixely that's because you need to change your blur subdivisions but this is going to really impact your render times so that hasn't even really helped I'll try that so the good thing about the physical renderer is you can use progressive rendering and so um, say you wanted one image uh, to look pretty good you could actually render one frame and say you had an hour you could render that one frame for an hour using the progressive render and it gets steadily better and better um, as these prog uh, progressive passes actually go by um, it's not something you can really use for motion graphics but for um, kind of still images it's really good I used it a bit quite a bit for one of my projects um, just to kind of play around until I got something I liked 
because uh, you get a good view of what it will look like, and then the more passes you have, uh, the better detail it gets. So I'm just going to stop that. The other way is actually to use the multi-pass option, and so it takes a little bit more setting up to do, and we're actually going to use a standard renderer, but we're going to turn off depth of field, and just making sure this is still set up. So going to turn off movie camera and turn on our rear blur and what you want to do here is you don't actually need a focus point what you want to do is set the focus point before all your objects and a good thing to keep in mind is to have kind of all your objects uh, kind of kept within um, this kind of boundary here and so your focus point is before and the rear blur end is after and with that, what we want to do is in the standard renderer, right click on our multi pass, and at the very bottom is depth, and we turn on the multi pass. Now, under save, I'm just going to save uh, the regular image as a PNG. Um, I'm not going to have alpha channel for now, and we're just going to save this on the desktop under um, tutorial and test and you also need to save the multi-pass image as a PNG and I'm going to save that as depth and if we just hit render takes no time at all and if we go to the layer you can actually see we have this pretty cool depth pass uh, which is basically um, the further the image is back, uh, the lighter it becomes. And so what we can do is in After Effects is use that to actually create um, depth. And this is a kind of post-production depth effect, um, which is quite handy. It's not the best in every scenario, but in most times it can be really useful so if we get both of these and I'm just going to make a new composition with our test image and drag the depth below and so basically everything's lined up and if you have a sequence then um, in Cinema 4D this will save as a depth sequence of PNGs and the image will save as an image sequence so you'll get kind of the same thing and it'll play through fine and there's two plugins you could use for this you could use a built-in one called uh, camera lens blur which instantly blurs the entire image until you select this blur map and the layer we want is our depth so you can see here now we can kind of play with um, our depth radius and we can actually move through and blur different sections of our image so the very front to the very back and you can change like the highlights um, so if you want there to be some highlights on it you can um, the aspect ratio which I'd leave normally at about one uh, the amount of blur, uh, depending on how much blur you want, it can often, the problem is sometimes it doesn't really look too realistic. I might be doing this completely wrong um, because it kind of sticks within the image a bit too much. Um, I'm sure there's a way to fix it, but I think... I'm not too sure. That's a problem I've found and haven't really found a um, way to solve it. But if anyone knows how, I'd love to know. Um, the other way is using a third, part, third party plugin from Frischlauf. I'm probably pronouncing that horribly wrong, but it's called Dep um, FL Depth of Field and again we use the depth map and 
the reason I like this one is because of the select depth. So if I wanted to focus on this point here, all I have to do is click there. Or if I wanted this object, um, it automatically changes it. So I really like this, and again it has a um, amount of blur slider. Um, you can also uh, change the iris if you want it. Um, to be a different size, you could have uh, whatever you like. Um, and then you can go back and it all changes slightly. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it um, for different types of depth of field. Um, this one, as I said, is a non-destructive method, uh, means you can play around with it in post-production if the focus isn't quite right, um, or you want a bit less or a bit more. Um, the Cinema 4D one actually, I feel, works a bit better, just because, um, in this case, doesn't quite work. If you have a lot of black space, I find it doesn't work too well, but... Um, other projects, like if I quickly open you um, a little look at something I'm working on, um, around here, if I turn on my depth of field and blur it out a bit. In this case it works really nicely. Um, it blurs really well um, with the background because I believe there's things to actually blow it with, uh, with rather than um, it just having to blend with something. Um, black which doesn't really seem to work too well but as you can see if I wanted to focus over there everything becomes out of focus except for there if I want the text it works perfectly so this is a really good way to add the kind of depth of field you might like in post-production um, so I hope you've learned something and I hope it answered the question uh, that my subscriber had um, if you do have any more questions, feel free to post them below, and I do read through every comment I get, so if it's something I feel should be answered, I will help you out. So, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.